Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today we are going to work on some folded flowers. Now you can use these in a variety of ways. I've added pin backs to mine so you can attach them to a project, a pillow, denim jacket, a sweater. Just wear it as a brooch or add it to a decoration. You can make them in different sizes. I made these small ones as my little test flowers, but you can make them in any size. We are going to make this jumbo one today. Now I did these all by hand and I'm going to show you how to hand stitch them. Now these are also considered Japanese flowers. They are called, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Kanzashi flowers. And there's how that is spelled. You can do them by hand as I'm going to show you, but there's also special tools. And these are very similar to like the yo-yo maker. So you can do a yo-yo by hand or you can use a tool to make it quicker and usually easier for yourself. They show a lot of examples. They have them on drawstring bags. You can attach them to a regular bag. You can use them as centerpieces. This is a little potpourri looking thing. They attach them to lamps little basket you can make these in a variety of fabrics I'm just using quilting cotton for mine but you can use some type of a silk as they used over in Japan they were very well known as part of a bride's dress and stuff that they put it in their hair or added it to the dress the different people in the bridal party would wear them you can make a little tablescaping decoration type thing with them so over the years they have of course like anything else have spread throughout the world and you can find them in almost any culture now. I've added a button to the center of mine and I've turned mine into pin backs. So I have my cotton fabric, I have some buttons for decoration, I have one of these little pin backs that you could use a safety pin or just skip it all together and I use some felt to cover it up. Because when we gather these, we're going to have a little bit of a mess in the center. Just like when we were doing the hexagon star Christmas ornaments, we want to put something in the center to cover it up. Now you could use a button or a yo-yo. I give several examples of different things that you can use as we're going through the tutorial. Now each of the tutorials I saw online they had you start out with a three and a half inch circle. Some did it using a square and that was a three and a half inch square. I found that the circle was the easiest to do so I went and used a three and a half inch circle for all of my petals. So I did three little test flowers and each of them I started out with a three and a half inch circle and when they finished up they're about three three and an eighth inches from tip to tip. Based on this, I would say if you wanna have a four inch flower, start out with your petals at four and a half inches, maybe a little bit larger. I don't see that I would need it to be a specific size purposefully, as long as if it was about four inches, four and a quarter, if that's what I was going for, I think that would be fine. We're gonna make a super size one today. I cut out six six inch squares so i'm going to make five and a half inch flowers just so that it's a lot easier to see than dealing with the little bitty petals like this you really can make this any size you want you can choose any number of petals the rule where they say that things look better in odd numbers is great but sometimes if you go with the odd numbers it looks a little bit more squished together where six just kind of sits nicely together and seven just looks a little bit squished. Plus I wasn't able to do the every other like I was thinking I could. So I had two exactly the same that were together there. Now I've starched all of my fabric. It just makes it a little bit easier to work your petals, but you can go ahead and skip the starching. I'm just folding these into quarters just so I can find my center point. Now I'm going to use my Ulfa circle cutter, but you can just look around the house and find something that's round that works for the size that you're looking for. This is a lid off of the cat treat container. Maybe you might have a glass or a shot glass or a small plate or a teacup or whatever. What I like to do is I just take a tape measure around the house, looking through the kitchen and just find something that's the right size. I do that with a lot of my circle projects. So for this tool, I have it set at half of the size of my circle. So it's at two and a half inches. First time I use it, it always takes me a little bit just to find the rhythm of holding that down. Oh, 
but it does cut out nice little circles. So you just need to cut out as many circles as you want for petals. If you want to cut out, just work on one first or cut out several of them at a time and just get it all prepped ahead of time. Next thing you're going to do is take it over to your pressing station. You're going to press your circle in half and then into a quarter. Now I did pay a little bit of attention for these. It didn't really matter to me how they turned out, but for these I decided to go ahead and put the people, the prince and princess on the inside. I just figured that it might not work out that well when you have it all folded up to have a weird looking figure and just different body parts and stuff. So I just went ahead and closed them up so I have this nice pink and light blue. So I've started my needle with just some basic sewing thread. I am using black so there's a high contrast so you guys can see what's happening. But if you're doing this yourself, you want to use a color that's going to blend in so that it's not as noticeable. I used blue just in case any of your threads are seen anywhere. I went ahead and used the blue on this one and then I just went with a white here. So this one I would use a white or a very light color in blue or green. I went ahead and I put a knot at the end of my thread just so that in case I pull it through accidentally. But we want to leave a little bit out, just five or six inches or so, because after we put all our petals together, we're going to use this piece and this end and use them to tie everything together. I started the folded side. You could start either place wherever you want. And you want to stay within maybe about a quarter of an inch from the end. You really don't want to do your stitching all the way up here because we want to make sure when we're done that all of our thread is in there. You can see where I have a little bit of the blue thread that's coming out from underneath my button. I didn't use a very large button on that one. If I use something larger, it would cover it up. So just some nice big running stitches. It's one of those projects that are really good while you're at the sitting out on the couch and watching TV and just spending a little time with the family. Just leave a bunch of it at the end there. And while I have this one still attached, I'm not cutting my thread at all. I'll pick up the next one. And I'll just go ahead and start working on this one also. Just big chunky running stitches. Just let these two sit next to each other and leave them down on my table and I'm just going to keep on going. I added some beeswax to my thread just to keep it from tangling because I do have my thread doubled and anytime I double my thread it always ends up getting tangled. A little bit of beeswax or some type of thread conditioner will usually help solve that problem. As these are coming together, I am just giving them that little bit of a squish. You see, I'm just kind of squishing them together. That's just going to make it a little bit easier when we get to the final stage of putting them together. If they're not scrunched up, it's going to be fine. We'll scrunch them soon. Now, if you want, I just have one layer of fabric on these. You can go ahead and make a larger flower like I am now for this part of it. And then you can put a smaller flower on top. So if this one were smaller, we can put them together like that and then sew our buttons on or glue our buttons on at the end. My petals wanna naturally kind of curl up in a little bit of a cup shape. So I'm going to leave them all in the same direction like that. Just pull on my threads to get these to gather up nicely. We're gonna fuss with them a little bit later. This is why we double the thread or use a heavier weight thread because as you're pulling on it, it's really easy to break the thread. 
I saw some people use embroidery floss. They were using three strands, and I thought that was quite a bit of thickness, but you could always use just one strand of embroidery floss. It's a little bit stronger than some of the threads. See how they just go ahead and pull together? I'm going to keep this knot on the back. Using the thread conditioner or using the beeswax for me, it helps everything just kind of hold it together. And it keeps them from just popping back out so it's got a little bit of a, a grab to the thread. Just your basic overhand knot just to keep it from coming back undone. I have this thread here. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that hanging for now. I like to just come back up through the center of the hole. You can start on the front or the back. I just like to gather the front up a little bit neater. I want to make sure everybody is kind of just laying nicely. Now, if you have them and you've gathered it up, like this one's looking pretty good, you can take your thread and go back around through all of these little bumpies and through the petals and stuff to hold them in place, or you can stitch across from each other. I've done it both ways depending on how they end up looking. So I think for this one, going to just take it on these little bit of folds, run my needle really close to the edge, to that raw edge on the inside, about an eighth of an inch away. And this is just gonna help gather them all together and hold them nice and tight. Again, if yours are sitting nice and pretty, you can just skip this step. We're going to put a button or a old brooch or brooch, brooch, brooch. Maybe you have a cluster of beads you want to put in there or a couple of small buttons all clustered together. Anything you want just to cover up that center. You could put a little bitty of a yo-yo in there. I'm going to cover the back with some felt, but you could put some felt on the front if you'd like. Since I starched my fabric, it's a little bit more difficult to pull it through. You can definitely skip the starch if you'd like. I just use this stuff I pick up at Walmart, Faultless Magic Light Finish Ironing Spray Sizing. I've heard that sizing is less likely to cause those white flakes than an actual starch does. There we go. I'm gonna get back to the center right back to the beginning. When I get back to the beginning where I started, I can just tie this off. Let's go through a little different section than where you came out. Just do a little knot. Now, if your back is looking a little bit messy, you can do the same thing there. Just do a few tacking stitches just to hold it nice and neat. I don't go through each and every fold like I do on the front. The front is held nicely right now, so I just want to make sure everything here is just going to stay in that same circle-ish situation. Check, make sure your front still looks nice. And then I can just take these two ends, give them a nice little knot here. If you're using matching thread, you can go ahead and bury your thread. I'm just going to triple knot this, just meaning I'm going to tie it three times instead of two. And then I'll trim it off because I'm going to put a piece of felt on the back of this and cover it up. Now for these little guys, I did put a pin back on it. To get the right size circle for my felt on the back, I just found that the inside of a washi tape roll, at least the ones that I have, was the perfect size circle for that. To draw on felt, I just used the Frixion pen that would erase with heat. That way, afterwards, I can, one, put the Frixion side back against the flower so you couldn't see it. But if anyone who's tried to trace and cut out things on felt, you know if you use something like a Sharpie or whatever, that it's really going to show through on the outsides of your felt. 
Now for this one, it'll be a little bit too small to use the inside of my washi. So I can just test these out and see which one is going to cover it up nice. I'm going to use the outside. So I think this guy is a good fit. I keep a bag with my felt scraps. These just happen to be left over from when I was doing the Easter banners. We'll find a color that matches if you want. I decided to go with something that matches because if you pull the petals apart, sometimes you can see the felt circle there. So just based on my scraps, I do have a darker blue. I would rather have a paler blue that I don't have available. So I think this pink will work fine. Just go ahead and trace around that circle. You can use a circle cutter. You can use, again, on the back, I think the really a good idea is to use the felt if you're going to put a pin on it. If you're just going to put this onto something and you're not gonna have it removable, you can just put anything on the back, really. You can just actually put your hot glue on it and then glue it to your project to say you're gonna decorate maybe a Christmas stocking or something like that. If you wanna take it on and off of a tote bag or if you wanna put it maybe on your shirt, your sweater, your denim jacket, it's nice to have a pin. You can also just use a safety pin and that'll work fine too. Whatever you put on the front is going to cover it up so you can't see all the way to the back. Sometimes when you do this, you have a bit of a hole in the center and you can't pull them all the way through. I noticed that the more petals I have, the bigger my hole is. So if you wanna have a nice small hole, then maybe take out one of the petals. If you see like you have a big hole, you can always remove a petal. When cutting out circles, instead of moving your scissors all the way around, that tends to make a bit of a choppy circle. If you just put your scissors in one spot and you move whatever you're cutting so that your scissors go around and stay on that line, you're going to get a bit of a smoother edge to your circle. Carol Duvall taught me that many, many years ago on the Carol Duvall Show. I think that's a great tip that I've always remembered. And then if you have any of the ink showing, like I have a little bit of a spot there, again, I'm gonna put that on the back like this so you can't see it. But since it erases with heat, I can just go ahead and do that. As a precautionary thing, yes, if you use a Frixion pen and you're in the cold or you put your project in the freezer, that ink will come back. But since we are going to be putting it on the back like this, it's not gonna really matter. Make sure whatever side you drew the ink on is going this way and no one will ever see it. Now I also, since I'm gonna put a pin on, if you notice, I covered up my pin. Now if you're just making this for yourself and you just wanna get it done, you can either hand stitch this down to the felt or just glue it down. I wanna show you if you wanna put these in a shop or put them in a boutique. You can make them for hair bows or anything like that. It's nice to take a little strip of felt and cover up any of the stitching or the glue. This one is a little bit narrow, so it doesn't cover that whole area. I made this one a bit wider and it covers everywhere. And the same thing with this one. So to figure out that strip, you just need to know how wide it is from maybe where the three circles are from end to end. You could set that down and measure it. And it looks like for this guy, I don't have the packaging anymore, but I'd say since it goes from side to side, it is one inches wide. I say that this is probably a one inch fastener. These are really great to put on a lot of things. I like it because it has the little locking mechanism here. But you can just use a safety pin or you could even put Velcro on it. So if you wanna put it somewhere that it's gonna be removable and change out the flowers, totally up to you. But I'm just going to figure, take my little scrap from cutting out the circle, see if it fits through there. It's a little bit wide, plus it's a little bit crooked. If you have your old rotary cutter, you can go ahead and use that like I have one that I use for paper. Just fit that through. Now this one fits pretty good and it's right up to the edge of the circle. But if it were longer, what I did with these, you see how they have that nice curved edge and it's not too harsh. I put it across the circle like this and then I flipped it over and I just trimmed around here that way I didn't have to try to figure out an exact curve. 
and you can use anything you want to trace it but since I already had a circle it was just as easy to do that and then you have it on there and if you want you can take off those harsh little edges there just finish that curve going around basically you're going to end up with a band-aid shape or I believe it's called a plaster over in other countries. But for this one, I just went ahead and just curved the edges just a little bit so we don't have those sharp corners. This is some of my random buttons, some of my smaller ones, my different novelty ones that I'm not using for my button wall hanging project. If you're doing one, maybe you have a soccer loving girl that you wanna make her one, you could put a soccer ball in the center. I got smiley faces. There's hearts and there's flowers. Or maybe you just have a regular circle button. You can put anything you want on there. You can layer them up. I know I want my button to be large enough to cover the center here. So maybe I'll just stick with a simple white one. Just check around to see that was the problem with this one that if I used a larger button, you wouldn't have seen any of those threads popping out. Oh, here's the one with the thread. Had a little bit of thread right there. So if you really wanted to use that red button, what you can do is you can take your larger white button and then you can layer a second one on top. Now you could stitch these down if you'd like. I got a lot of layers going through here and I find it's easier just to hit it with the hot glue gun. Maybe if you're making these for a, your shop or in a boutique or whatever, you might want to use something a little stronger. I don't mess with the E6000. That tends to be a little bit more than I need for anything. Plus the smell is just too much for me. I'm going to take my old cutting mat, just put it down here so I don't get glue on my good station. Since I don't have to use a glue gun very often, I just picked this one up at the Dollar Tree. So you get a little small one and then you can buy the sticks for it. So on my back, on my felt, I just go close to the edge, but not all the way. I find it's easier for me to put it on the felt than it would be to put it on the flower and try to match it. And one of the reasons I don't go all the way to the edge is I wanna have something that I can hold on to without sticking my fingers in the glue. If you needed to, you can always go back through and either do some hand tacking from the felt here to the petals, or you can add some more glue to the back of it. And then while that's setting up, I like to go ahead and do the center. Make sure my button's gonna cover where I want it to. Now for these, I don't know if you could see, but that's glue that's popping up through the center. Now I could take an X-Acto knife or some type of scissors and clip that off, but I went ahead and left the glue coming up to hold the button on and just gave it a little bit of a design element. You could add a couple beads to it. Maybe, I don't know if you can use a marker on hot glue, color it in with a little paint or a marker or stamps or something. So I put a decent amount on my button. I don't want it to ooze out on the sides, but I don't mind if it does through the center of the holes, as I mentioned. You can also put it on the center of your flower. And I just push it down hard. Now it's gonna hold the felt on the back a little bit more. Chances are I talk too much and it's already dry, but I wanna hold it down long enough so that those little sections coming up through the center of the button start to dry a little bit. My thought process is that maybe the glue going up through there gives it a little bit extra. I'm sure if you picked at this, you could probably pull it off. Again, it's just hot glue. So if you wanna make something that's going to last a long time and be able to be used and maybe used by kids and barrettes and stuff, you might wanna go ahead and use the E6000 or super glue or whatever else. If you make a lot of hair bows and stuff, you already know what glue works best for those. If you want to put it on a tote bag or something, you definitely want to make sure it's something that's going to last. I haven't tested these out. But if I'm making it for myself, then I feel confident that if there's an issue, I can always just fix it and put more glue on or change it up. Again, those of you who know, know exactly what to use and what works best. Now for the back, 
I've never liked to be able to see the stitching when you stitch this through because you can go through these two holes and through the felt and do all of that first before you glue it down. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the hot glue to hold it down onto the felt and then I'm going to hot glue this piece on top just to cover it up. If you decided to stitch this little clip, the pin back to your felt and you want to put this on, you can go ahead and use some fabric tack that tends to hold really well to the felt. If you see any of your hot glue strings, you can just go ahead and pull those off. Now, if you're putting a pin on, you want to decide which is the top and bottom of your flower, if it really matters. Because then when you put it on, like if I want my buttons, the holes to go this way, I want to make sure I put my pin on this way. Because however you put your pin on is going to be the way your flower lays. So add a little bit of glue to the... So I get for trying to do it left-handed. Add a little bit of glue to the back of the pin just to hold it in place. Double check to make sure this is gonna fit nicely. I'm gonna add light around the edges a little bit more down the center just to hold everything in place. Again, leaving the edges so that I have something to hold on to. Slide it through. And there you go. I have a little bit seeping out there so you can always come back later with an X-Acto knife or a pair of sharp little scissors. Let it sit and dry for a little bit depending on the adhesive you used. And there you go. I really like this one at the large version. And as I mentioned, you can stack these up. So instead of putting your button on and the pin back, you could have glued this on top. Maybe you want to have a little bit of a blue one on there. You can offset it like this way or have it go double. As you're making these, you can make a second petal and set it on top of this and then stitch them all together and gather them up so you have a two-tone. So maybe this petal was, what do we do, five inches? And then the next petal below it, you can do at about four inches so that you could see a, a black petal on the back and a white petal on the front and you can have the double color. And then as you stitch them together, they would stay together. You could also lay them on top of each other and just give a little couple tacking stitches on the bottom before you gather it up. Whatever works for you to get them all to stay together. So while I was going through and I was refreshing my memory on how to make these, you can look them up as the Kanzashi flower or you can just look up fabric flowers. There are loads of different fabric flower patterns that you can find on Pinterest and just by Googling them. So let me know if you want me to go ahead and do a tutorial on how to use these makers. When I was searching for them before, I did see that they are still available online so you can still purchase them. They come in different sizes and different shapes. So you can have a rounded petal large size and a rounded petal small. The large is three inches, the small is two inches. You have more of the pointed one, large and small. And this one, I have a gathered one, so you have a lot more petals. This reminds me more of the square version that you can make. And you can see the different things that they have chosen to use in the center. I really like the ones that have, like this one that you can have. This one looks like they actually did the beadwork, but you can buy a brooch. brooch. Boy, it's a hard word. You can buy a brooch that has that look to it. Really good idea is to check out thrift stores because they have all kinds of costume jewelry or just broken pieces of jewelry so you can buy just that one piece and then you can add it to all kinds of projects. It's very similar to the yo-yo maker where you can go ahead and do it on your own or you can get the tool and that makes it a lot faster. So if you're making these for a wedding or some type of a gathering or Girl Scout troops or something along those lines, then you might want to pick up the tool and make tons of them. So please let me know down in the comments, should I do another video on how to use the tool or should we just go ahead and move on to the next project? And I think because of all the troubles I've had today, your code word is brooch, brooch. Gosh, Robin, your code word is brooch. I will put the spelling of it right there just so I, no one gets confused at what I'm trying to say. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.